Data centers store massive amounts of data, a lot of which is sensitive and critical. So what's the technology that they use? Storage arrays. During the next 10 minutes, I will explain how storage arrays are different from the storage capacity used in laptops and even servers. Of course, using an easy to follow lightboarding story with no prior understanding about enterprise storage needed. This is the third video in our Introduction to Enterprise IT series. If you haven't seen the first two, I recommend watching them first. I will leave the links down below. This is a cut down version of the full 25 minute course module that all our members at Tech Enthusiast Academy have access to, plus much more. If you're not a student yet, sign up at academy.techenthusiast.com. Let's go. So enterprise storage, right? And more specifically, let's talk about storage arrays. And once again, I want to do the introduction to enterprise storage by comparing that to something familiar. And what could be more familiar than desktop or laptop uh, computers? And while we are at it, why not compare desktops to servers as well? So let's imagine a very simple situation where we have a file. It can be a Word document. It can be um, an Excel sheet. It can be whatever file you are editing on your computer and you want to save it, store it on a hard drive. So here on this desktop um, example, we have our desktop computer right here. And most typically desktop computers, as well as laptops and tablets and all, or most of the end user devices, they have one hard drive. So we have a drive right here. So now when we are writing that file to that drive, it will be stored on that drive as one file. So all the data that that file comprises of is stored as one entity in the drive. Now moving on to servers. What we want to do when we are talking about servers is we are first of all pretty paranoid about failures, something breaking down, something not functioning. And that's why we want to have not one, but multiple drives. For example, in this instance, I can have four SSDs, let's say. Availability will be drastically improved if we use multiple drives. We don't store the file directly to the hard drives or the SSD or the media. It goes through this magical black box. And that magical box is distributing that data across these drives. One fourth of the file is written on the first disk. The second quarter is written on the second drive. The third one here on drive number three. And finally, the last bit on the fourth drive. First of all, in the writing, when we're doing the writing, when we save the file on the drives, we can actually do it four times faster because we can do this storing, writing operation on all the drives at the same time. Individual disk has only so much performance it can do alone. But put four of them and you make that performance roughly four times better. The reading goes equally fast because you can read from all the drives at the same time. What is this mysterious black box here then. Well, that is the RAID controller or redundant array of independent drives. Let's move on to the storage array side. So here 
we have the same file that we need to store, but this time we need to store it on a storage array. Storage array is an accessory to servers or some computers. It doesn't work alone. So you cannot just store this file straight to the storage array. You need a server in between. And to connect our server to the storage array, we need something else installed in the server. We need something called HPA. What's that? It's kind of a, just a network card, special kind of a network card, not connecting servers to servers, but connecting servers to storage arrays. So now when we are writing that file from this server, HPA or this special networking card will just forward the request to the storage array. And instead of having this RAID functionality in a server here, we move that to the storage array. There is something called a controller, storage controller in storage arrays, which is kind of just a small computer or server. So we are doing exactly the same. We are distributing that file to all of these uh, drives on the storage array. Little piece here, little piece there, little piece of that file on each and every one of these drives the performance that we get from storage array because it has tons of drives. It has more than four drives. It has dozens and dozens of drives and all of those are servicing your request there. So you can actually write and read super fast from the storage arrays. Another beauty of this is that we can have more than one arrays. Let's have another storage array. And what we can do with these two uh, storage arrays is we can make them replicate data. So whenever we are writing a file on this first storage array, we distribute it here nicely on all the drives, we have the file stored here. But immediately after that, we replicate that data on this secondary storage array. So all that data, that whole file, is also stored on a secondary storage array. In some kind of a super catastrophical situation where we lose the whole storage array where the data is stored, we still have the other uh, storage array that has all the data intact, all the performance, all the availability, all the drives available. So this is super highly available environment here. However, uh, paranoid as we are, <laughs> We don't even usually trust that. Even if we have a couple of very expensive, highly available performance storage arrays, something can still go wrong, as we know. To mitigate all of the above, we usually want to have some backup option available. Backup device where we periodically save data from our primary storage devices, the storage arrays that are servicing our everyday production. This is the most current version that's stored here on the backup device. We just did it 20 seconds ago. So this is the situation that the file was 20 seconds ago. But we also have the version from yesterday so this is 24 hours ago. We have done some edits to the file after that. So the current version and the yesterday's version is a little bit different. And we might also have a version from last week, which is uh, again, somewhat different version than it was yesterday or as it is today. So let's imagine that the current version is now corrupted or there's a ransomware attack. So what we can do is we can roll back to yesterday's version. We might lose some changes. We, we might have done some changes to the Word document or the Excel sheet, and we will lose those changes when we do a recovery to that state. But at least it's not corrupted, and at least the ransomware attack will go away when we restore to this healthy state of the file. So there you have it. So this is the difference between how desktops are storing data compared to the servers. But when we talk about storage arrays, we go to whole another level. 
So we have multiple times more drives in one storage array. We can distribute it in many more ways than only using just the one standard rate controller. Not only that, but we can have multiple storage arrays. So we replicate data from one storage array to another storage array. So even if we lose this first one completely, which is pretty rare, we still have all the data and all the performance here on the secondary one. If all else fails, these both storage arrays are out of the question for some reason. Data corruption, ransomware, uh, earthquake, flooding. We still have the data stored on our backup device where we can do restoring the data back to the storage array and off we go again. Data centers need vast amounts of super robust storage capacity and storage arrays are the most popular solutions to deliver that. If you want to learn more about enterprise storage or enterprise IT in general and score a course completion certificate to brag with, go to academy.techenthusiast.com and sign up for the course. Next video will be all about the basics of enterprise networking. Subscribe and hit the bell button to be the first to know when that's released. Thanks for watching. Until the next one.